facile formulas, catchy slogans, 10-step programs, and quick fixes too often dominate today's management training programs. But in organizations, as in all of life, human behavior is seldom predictable, and business dilemmas do not easily lend themselves to gimmicks or simplistic answers. In Management of the Absurd, psychologist, educator, and former CEO Richard Farson presents a series of management paradoxes designed to challenge conventional wisdom and encourage managers to examine their assumptions about effective leadership. Good morning, this is Ron. Welcome to Storytime. And uh, good morning. This is uh, Thursday, October 12th, and I'll be reading from Chapter 16. Individuals are almost indestructible, but organizations are very fragile. I've been impressed again and again by how resilient individuals are, but how fragile are the organizations that are key to their survival? Even the most intense, confrontational, and sometimes traumatic situations rarely damage an individual. Yes, there is hurt, but seldom is there permanent damage. People survive the most devastating natural disasters in relatively good psychological shape. But relationships can be destroyed with one wrong word, one single act. That has important implications for organizations, particularly small ones. Most businesses fail because of ruptured relationships among the principles. Commonly held ideas about the fragility of individuals have led us to treat people who have gone through horrifying experiences, such as the Holocaust, as if they were damaged goods. So we compound their hurt by regarding them as somehow less than fully capable. That is not to say they don't suffer, but they're not damaged to a point where they need to, uh, where they function less than normally. A former student of mine, Edith Eggers, a survivor of Auschwitz, discovered this when she com- completed a study of other Holocaust survivors. While they were no doubt deeply scarred, on all life adjustments and personality measures, they functioned as well as or better than others who had not experienced such traumatic ordeals. Fragile Monoliths Individuals are very strong, but organizations are not. Part of the reason why we don't recognize the vulnerability of organizations is that we have a hard time believing that the relationships which make them work are real. Even psychologists sometimes think of organizations as simply collections of individuals. But relationships, the bonds between people, are very real, and they have a life of their own. To a great extent, they determine the behavior of an organization and the people within it. We may also feel that we can abuse organizations because we've all had experiences with bureaucracies that make them seem like monoliths, impenetrable to all our efforts to make them respond. We feel we have no impact on organizations, that no matter what we do, they can absorb it. That, of course, is not the case. One bad press story can severely damage a bureaucracy. Even giant corporations that seem indestructible can be seriously wounded or even brought down by a single unfortunate turn of events, as we have recently seen with the bankruptcy of Dow Corning, as a result of lawsuits filed on behalf of the recipients of the company's silicone breast implants, and with the closure of Johns Manville because of litigation over the health hazards of asbestos. Not all companies deserve to survive. But, nevertheless, we should be paying more attention as a society to sustaining organizations. We cannot assume that because they are large, they are also indestructible. A troubled or failing organization needs at least as much attention as a troubled or failing individual. After all, our lives depend upon organizations. For all practical purposes, in terms of our ability to understand and improve the way society functions, it may be that the individual is the wrong focus of our attention. Perhaps we should be looking more carefully at constellations of individuals, groups, families, work teams. My experience tells me that people suffer most in their lives from failed or failing relationships, parental rejections, marital strife, difficulties with bosses, or from the lack of relationships, isolation, alienation, erosion of community. It follows, then, that the best way to deal with individuals may be to improve relationships. And that's the end of chapter 16, and uh, coming up on Saturday, the 14th of October, will be chapter 17, titled, The Better Things Are, The Worse They Feel. So until then, thank you very much for joining me, and have a great day.